Good morning everyone. Today I finally have some time to make this video about the uh, development boards I'm using for uh, further Amicube development. And uh, truth to be told, I didn't have much chance to play with this uh, in the last uh, five or six days because I was busy with assembly and shipping Minimix. But um, now it's weekend, so finally I have some time to, to leak, look into all this um, stuff and make some comparison. I only had the chance to do some development with the Spartan board, but uh, these these two uh, boards are totally new and I haven't had the chance to even do a preliminary assessment. But uh, what is it? What, what are we looking at here? So these are all AMD parts or Xilinx because AMD is, is owning Xilinx now. They, they bought the, the company a few years ago. And um, these are, I would say, mid-range of the products, FPGA products from, from AMD. Uh, they're quite uh, nice for the, as he says here, for makers and hobbyists. Uh, they're considered to be a cheap, uh, cost-effective parts. And of course, from here you can go further and get larger and more capable parts. But uh, I think for a board that's similar to what I'm, I mean, comparing to Minimig and what I'm trying to, to design for a next-gen board for Amicube, this might be a good fit, uh, at least to, to start with. One thing that I'm a little bit concerned right now is concerned with is the number of high old pins, which is we'll see in a second. Uh, it's it's somewhat limited, but it's uh, still uh, improvement comparing to old Spartan three that Minimi has. But uh, in terms of the size, all of these parts are are just completely fine because. AGA, you can fit AGA in someone between 25,000 to 30,000 LEs, I believe. Uh, these are, are 50,000 LEs and up, so more than enough, even for some, you know, improvements in terms of uh, maybe RTG card or, uh, you know, something else, maybe a sound card inside of the RPGA. So that's all within the realm of possibilities within, within, with these parts. <clears throat> so let's do the kind of fake unboxing because <clears throat> excuse me I already unboxed these before packaging is quite interesting it's quite simplistic it's just a carton box and then they use these foam um, protection let's say so this is the one that I already featured in one of the videos so this is a Spartan and if you remember, Minimic has Spartan chip as well, original Minimic, but it's part from 2000, I believe, and maybe five or six or 2003. I'm not sure when they start producing those Spartans, but quite an old uh, part. Uh, this is something that's uh, being produced right now. It's a modern part. It's uh, Spartan 7. And uh, if you look at the specs, I printed out the... Uh, portfolio of uh, all the FPGA products. Uh, let's try to find um, Spartan 7 here. Oh, there we go. So looking at this table, as far as I can tell, if I'm not mistaken, and I might be because I didn't really spend a lot of time, but what I can tell, this is the part XE7S50. You can even see the large number 50 here. But uh, yeah, this is the one. So what's what's so, what's so important? I guess number of logic cells, 52,000, 160, which is plenty. Number of slices, this correlates, um, the, these two numbers. Um, distributed max RAM, I guess this is if you use um, all of the fabric uh, for RAM, which we want. And we might use some sort of um, cache memory like Minimit does if I figure out how, because that's the thing that's really uh, improving the minimum performance. So I'm going to look into that and so forth. Things like um, block RAM, uh, first in, first out, uh, total block RAM, clock management tiles and so forth and so forth. 
Um, so this is interesting. PLLs five. Yeah, this is number of PLLs uh, clock management tiles. Maybe we can do in the menu. I can create five different clocks, so you can do seven. I don't know. 14, 25, up to 60 megahertz. So you can actually choose that from the menu. That would be very nice. Uh, and then uh, IO pins, what I'm seeing here, uh, and I need to be careful because some of the pins are um, used for some specific purposes, some of general use, but it says max single ended IO pins 250. And of course differential pairs 120. So this number 250, it's, it's quite decent. I think uh, so. It's a it's a good start to hopefully implement entire Minimig with AGA with a, a CPU slot plus floppy. I think so. This board can do it. Now bear in mind this is just a FPGA chip. There's no ARM controller here. Minimig relies on the, um, some MCU system controller, whatever is the one you choose um, to kickstart the system bring FPGA up uh, and uh, do all sorts of, um, s how can I say that, uh, pre-start uh, configuration setup uh, for the um, for the board to, to become alive. Uh, that's not strictly necessary. I have some uh, FPGA boards here. They're not using any sort of uh, ARM controller or, or MCU on the side to kick kickstart the Minimig because uh, everything's done in FPGA and you can, you can create a small FPGA core that will do just that because it's quite simple. There's not much happening there. So, you know, within, um, I guess within a couple of days, I'll be able to develop something just for the FPGA. Having said that, these boards are capable of running micro microblaze, which is um, proprietary AMD, um, let's call it MCU or CPU. And, uh, if we can port the minimum stuff to use microblaze in some extent, if that's needed or if that's a good fit, I, which I, I'm not sure about this time, I really need to kind of start looking into microblaze development. If that's the case, then that's great because we don't need any additional parts. Everything can run off the FPGA. There's another thing, uh, those um, ARM controllers or MCUs, they also use some sort of um, they're used for floppy emulation and stuff like that, as far as I know. So that's another thing that needs to be ported. But I mean, you know, we have source code. So from, from that point on, it's just a matter of moving to a different platform and testing. So we'll see how it goes. Now, what comes after Spartan? This is kind of like a step up. It's Artex. So this is Artex board. And if they do another unboxing, you'll see it's very similar inside. So there is this foam, it's a little carton box, nothing special there. And if you look at the chip right away, you'll see that, um, well, I don't know if it's different in size, it might be quite similar, same uh, BGA package. But inside, it's quite a different thing. So what they're telling me is that this is better performing chip. But uh, aside from that, uh, it, it has a better fabric density inside. So if uh, we compare these two boards, if you look at the sheet. So Artex, uh, this is the chip that I have, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 100T. It has 101 440 uh, logical cells. So 101,440, that's quite an improvement. It's double in size. This is quite a serious part for a little hobby board. And then everything else, maximum distributed RAM is also interesting here. Uh, it's 1,188 uh, kilobytes, if I'm looking this correctly. But uh, interesting part is that in terms of how it's quite similar. It's 210 uh, pins. And these are, I believe, all uh, general purpose IO pins. But um, interesting part here, there is an Ethernet on board. So this chip can support that, I believe. And maybe we can find here transceivers, uh, Ethernet transceivers uh, and things like that. But um, I see a little chip here, a little part as well, next to the uh, 
next to the Ethernet, so that's probably related as well. So this is required. RAM, I believe, I'm I'm looking now at uh, these sheets, but I think it's also DDR3. If I'm not mistaken, it says on box uh, that DDR3 L, I think. And the uh, same thing for the Arduino thing. Um, and these are um, the um, these are the little P mods for. Um, whatever you need, you can add um, PS2 or VGA or whatever. I have those P mods, quite a, quite a few of them. So we can do some sort of development right away. But um, major difference here is a better performing uh, FPGA and uh, also uh, bigger fabric. IO is quite similar. And I guess there is quite a list of features why this is a better chip, uh, which, you know, I don't know. I don't know how much I'm interested in all these other um, char characteristics here. We'll see in time, but um, I think uh, either either part will do. Spartan or Artix. The main difference for this particular application with the uh, AmiCube will be the price. I think these chips don't have ARM controller or any MCU integrated, but they can all run microblaze so that's you know maybe that's even better approach if you can port stuff from minimic to uh, from that arm control to microblaze then uh, bob dear uncle you can use any um, amd part in the future and um, you know it's very easy to maintain the project well you see people usually think once you create a hardware a board you're set for kind of unlimited time, but that's not the case. It's very similar to software or let's say app development. You make app, you publish the app on App Store, and then after a while that app gets uh, obsolete, the libraries gets too old, and store will disregard your app. It's similar here, but what happens, it's not the App Store that uh, becomes obsolete, it's your parts. You cannot uh, find replacement parts, you cannot buy new parts, so that's a problem. So therefore, if you can design something that's uh, sustainable in terms of you can change, interchange parts or buy new parts and replace part the, um, um, certain elements of your design easily, the better. So I see microblaze as, as being something that's portable. Can I integrate microblaze into... Um, Design, we'll see uh, to a certain, which extent uh, I, I need to try and uh, play with um, uh, Vivado and see how it goes, but I'll definitely give it a go. And again, this uh, Artix will have the same uh, board with the Sam, Sam uh, 7, S7, so I can make um, development uh, quicker and easier. So I can use all the parts of the Minimig and start re-engineering that for the AmiCube uh, more efficiently. So that's that. Now, next board, another step up, I believe. If It's a different kind of beast, but uh, I believe that's definitely a step up. It's um, Zinc, if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Same packaging, foam, you already seen that. Uh, there are little feet here on the corner of the board, the same as, as the other. Oh, here I have SD card for the first time. And interesting thing about this particular um, board, and you can see Z as zinc, right? They're all RT, but this is Z. Previous one, the first one, Spartan was again S, and Artix was A. They all seems to be generation seven, which does make sense, same generation. So again, back to uh, RTZ7, which is um, zinc board. This is totally different thing. I mean, it's not really totally, but kind of, because this is a SOC. Here you have a little ARM uh, Cortex chip. I believe this is two, two core variant. And uh, you also have quite uh, formidable fabric 
size. I believe it's 85,000 uh, uh, logical elements, which is uh, formidable by itself. But um, this thing is, uh, I believe, similar to what people use in uh, those boards for uh, Mister. Mister has uh, SOC that will kickstart the Linux, and from there you actually load your FPGA cores. I believe that's how it works. So this thing is, is quite similar. Um, has a quite a lot of things on the board. It has the SD card, obviously. Has the uh, Ethernet, uh, USB even. And then there is even HDMI out and in. And uh, some P modes. I don't have as much IO here. I guess because it's used for already these peripherals. And if you look at the sheet here uh, number of for this particular package clg 400 and for z 1720 is that one i'm using i hope so i i think i did the research the other day and that's the one so if you look at that one IO pins are about 125, 128. One, I believe, is coming from your SOC. The other one is for the FPJ. So, in terms of IO, quite limited, I would say, comparing to previous boards. But it's a good board to start playing with, um, with ARM, real ARM on the board. This is really high performance thing. So, in theory, and I'm talking this from top of my head from my imagination right now I don't really know for sure but I would imagine that you would be able to use that arm eventually as a Amiga CPU kind of like a Pinestorm and then use FPGA for the Amiga bits and parts so this may open up the door for some exciting things but remains to be seen I don't know I, I really need to start uh, developing for, for these new boards and see where how it goes but uh, it's interesting. It's quite interesting. The, my only concern is that once you use part like this, you kind of lock your project into this particular ARM architecture. You're not only relying on FPGA, you're now relying on SOC as well. But uh, this um, part will be supported for years to come. Uh, it has a very long lifespan from, from AMD, so it's... Uh, something uh, worth considering so that's that so we have the SOC with the 85k and we have uh, Artix which is um, formidable FPGA from Xilinx 100k Ellis and then we have 50k Ellis but these two are strict FPGAs and this is SOC so let's see how it goes now the next step for me is to port Original Minimic here, original Minimic core, and make it work. And from that point on, we can start playing with the AGA core, the virtual CPU, adding the socket, adding a floppy controller, all sorts of interesting things. Now, keep in mind, this will take a long, long time. So original Minimic is here to stay. I'm going to produce these boards for a long time because it's proven platform. It has its own case and it's beautiful and it does the job 99.9% .9 plus more. With the Pi Storm, I mean, it's just, it's a classic. But as we move forward, uh, at some point uh, we need to consider longevity of the Amiga project. Um, I mean, running Minimig in general as a dedicated uh, platform for Amiga. Uh, and um, these things are, I think, are good candidates uh, and remains to be seen. I'm, I will hopefully spend some time, as I said, this weekend with Vivado. So that's, uh, that's about that. I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I am hoping that uh, at least to a certain extent, this is an informative uh, video about these um, great uh, development boards. Next video will... Uh, have something running on them, hopefully, hopefully, I uh, fingers crossed. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching, and talk to you soon.